she's she's needs a pencil, but it's fine. She can look harder. She can get what you want to give her. If she has my entire bag of pencils. All right. Ready. I'd like to call to order the June 5th, 2023 meeting of the West Bridgewater School Committee. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence. Thank you. The listing of matters on tonight's agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may be in fact discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being shown live on cable and is being live streamed on the West Bridgewater Community Access Media website, wb-cam.org. A recording of this meeting will also be made available on the wb-cam.org website. First up, we have some recognitions, and I think Mr. Lehman is going to be kicking us off. Good evening. Uh, so we'd just like to take a second to recognize Mrs. Mills, who works with about 75 to 90 students every Tuesday for little, with the Little Leaders Club, if anyone doesn't know. And uh, it's definitely one of the best things going at the Howard School. They have a great time, and there's a lot for the community and the, the school culture. But Mrs. Mills received the Melvin Jones Award from the Lions Club. This award is presented to those who donate over $1,000 to the club, to the fund or people who donate are made by others. And it's tr tremendous contribution to humanity and to the legacy of the Lions Club founder, Melvin Jones. Uh, Melvin Jones Fellows receive a special label pin, a plaque, and a congratulatory letter and are invited to the luncheon at the Lions Club International, International Conference held in Boston. And Ms. Mills just wanted to say a couple words. Um, first, thank you to the Lions Club. I sincerely appreciate this award, but I'd like to dedicate my award to all of my little Leos who have put in so much service over the past 15 years. So thank you very much. This belongs to all of us, not just me. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for not only the Howard School, but the entire West Bridgewater School community. You do an outstanding job, so thank you very much. And I'd like to commend you for your work with that 70 plus students. <laughs> I've seen it myself, and <laughs> it's something. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Mills. Um, next up, we have another um, recognition um, Mrs. Goulain. So I always find this meeting to be a little bittersweet. So as excited as I am for Mrs. Green to be leaving, I'm excited that um, she's leaving. I'm also going to miss her immensely. She's been a WB educator for over 20 years. She's been a staple at McDonald's school. Everyone knows Mrs. Green. Um, she's often the first car in the parking lot, literally, and the last one to leave. Um, she won't. The school will not be the same without her, and I'm really excited, though, for her to start that new stage in her life. And I'm going to present you with this fabulous. Oh, it's so nice. Hi. Thank you so much. Do you want to say a few words? It's beautiful. She we know you love to see it, say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. It was just such an honor to uh, teach the kids here in West Bridgewater. I had such a great, great time um, over the past 20 years. I started my career many, many years ago in, in substitute teaching. And then Proposition Two and a Half fell, and they began to lay teachers off. And so I went into banking for many years, found my calling back, um, met Joyce Francis, um, who some of you may know, and she guided me back into teaching. And um, I'll forever be grateful to those people that mentored me, you know, early years in the early years, and she was one of them. But. Um, it, it's one thing to like your job and another thing to love your job. And I always loved my job. I always look forward to coming to work. Um, even on the weekends, I would think about what I was going to do with the kids the following week and how I could make their lessons better. And I will miss the children. I'll miss everyone, all my colleagues. I really had such a great time. And thank you for this. This is very nice. Thank you. Before I 
I'd like to share a couple of things with you. Um, but before I do, I want to say that I what I'm sharing is with permission of those involved. Um, for most most of you know, I have an older daughter who um, is in sixth grade, and she had you in second grade, Mrs. Green. Um, she loves school, absolutely loves school, loves to learn. But being in the classroom isn't always her favorite thing. Sometimes it's hard to be there. Um, when I brought her in for her kindergarten screening, I had to bribe her with a donut to get her in there. And even then, when we got to the end of the kindergarten hallway and I turned around to sign in, I heard, she's running! <laughs> She'd made it to the end of the kindergarten hallway before I caught up with her. In first grade, she laid down on the floor outside of the, her classroom and said, I'm not going in. In third grade, she crawled under the desk and refused to come out. And every time there was an amazing educator or paraprofessional or administrator, many of you who are in this room tonight, who got her back on track. But in second grade, I never got the call. And I've come to expect the calls at this point, especially around this time of year when we're cleaning out desks and we're cleaning off bookshelves and you know things are changing and the kids are, are getting anxious over the transition. I get the call. She had a rough day, but I didn't get the call in second grade. And the reason I didn't get the call in second grade is because of you. And I don't know if you remember, but you came in over the summer to meet her, to show her your classroom. Yes. You kept her busy. You kept her distracted. You gave her structure. You gave her routine. You showed her the expectations. And I know she probably spent a fair amount of time that year by your desk asking for help. And I think you gave her the help that she needed, but most of the time you said, go back to your desk and try it yourself. And she did. So at the end of the year, you were cleaning out some books. And um, you pulled out a math workbook. And if you recall, you guys had changed textbooks or, or work, workbooks halfway through the year. So the entire second half of the math book was not done. And you said, take this home and go work on it. Just go work on it. And I'm sure you just thought she was, you were keeping her busy. You probably didn't think she was going to finish it. But you said, if you finish it, you can get a prize from the prize box. It took her less than a week. Um, <laughs> it was at least 50 pages. And she brought it back. And um, you made good on your promise. And you let her choose a prize from the prize box. So I have that prize. <laughs> and she hemmed and hawed over the name of what she was going to name this prize for a couple of days. But once she decided, it was without hesitation. And this little guy, or girl, I should say, is known fondly in our house as Mrs. Green. <laughs> um, so I want to personally thank you on behalf of my daughter, of my family, I don't know how many kids have come through your classroom over the years. I'm sure you've made an impression on many of them, but thank you, you've made a true impact on our family. So I appreciate you and the service that you've given to the students in West Bridgewater. And it's not lost on me that you're retiring just before the second act moves up to second grade. <laughs> but I wish you well. Thank you. We wish you a long and healthy and happy retirement, Mrs. Green. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you for all you've done for our students and our families. Uh, it's sad, it's bittersweet when we lose such a great educator. Uh, but you've done such a wonderful job, and you've obviously made an impression on many. So thank you. All right, and our last recognition is our Inclusion Matters Grant of Gratitude Award winner, Mrs. Winchell. So uh, before I present this year's Grant of Gratitude winner, I just want to make a brief announcement to the school committee at the request of my board. So as you know, every school district in the Commonwealth is required per Chapter 71B of the Massachusetts General Law to establish a parent advisory council related to special education. This law states that this group of parents will advise the school committee on matters related to special education in the district and support the district's development of special education programming. Inclusion Matters is 
that state required special education parent advisory council or CPAC for our district, West Bridgewater. Along with other parents in the school district, I began the CPAC in 2015. Some of you may remember three special ed directors ago. <laughs> we grew over the years into what is now an actual nonprofit organization reaching hundreds of families a year in our district and beyond. We provide information about special education to parents and guardians, financial support to families who need advocacy services, consultation with the school district as needed, and social connections for families with special needs. We also cheer along special educators and regular educators in West Bridgewater however we can, because we know that special education is only as good as the regular education classrooms that support all students. I want to announce tonight that after nine years of service, this month marks my last as Chair of Inclusion Matters, and now you know why I'm reading. <laughs> While I hope to participate as a parent from time to time, I will no longer serve on its board. Be before I present our annual award, I want to announce at the request of my board the new co-chairs of Inclusion Matters, two parents who will no doubt be familiar to you, Bridget David, who's with us there, and David Schmier. Bridget and David, thank you for the years you have already served on our board, and thank you in advance for what you will do to support families who have IEPs and 504s in our school district. Presenting this award tonight is thus my last official act <laughs> as CPAC chair, which makes me especially proud. This is the fourth consecutive year Inclusion Matters has asked West Bridgewater families to nominate and recognize an outstanding inclusive educator in our school district. I'm thrilled tonight to recognize Mrs. Mary Aiello Jones as this year's nominee and grantee. I'd like to begin by reading a letter to Mrs. AJ, as you all know her, <laughs> about her nomination, and then uh, Mary will come and receive her grant award. Dear Mrs. Aiello Jones, on behalf of our board of directors and the West Bridgewater staff and families who nominated you, it is my pleasure to present you with the Inclusion Matters grant of gratitude in the amount of $500. Your nominator had so many wonderful things to say about how you include and support your students. And so I'm going to read from the actual nomination here. The nominator wrote, I have taught my daughter to advocate for her needs as she is the only one who knows best what will help her. Even with her advocating, teachers don't always respond to my daughter appropriately. They send her to try again or tell her to focus more. But Mrs. AJ always listens to her. She helps my daughter be the best student she can be by giving her what she needs. Mrs. AJ also learned the ins and outs of my daughter. Mrs. AJ gives my daughter extra time to complete assignments, but also knows that sometimes the extra time creates even more anxiety, and she helps change that. Mrs. AJ's subject is not a favorite of my daughter's, <laughs> but Mrs. AJ gets her interested in it so that she can get the work done. The subject may not be my daughter's favorite, but Mrs. AJ is her favorite teacher. If you ask my daughter why, she says, quote, Mrs. AJ listens to me when I need help. By listening, Mrs. AJ creates trust and builds my daughter's confidence. She gives my daughter the boost she needs to keep learning. Mrs. AJ, you have gone above and beyond to include all learners in your classroom, and so on behalf of all the children who love you and who have benefited from your support of their learning, I am pleased to honor you for your commitment to inclusive education in the West Bridgewater Schools. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> You do such a wonderful job with all of our students, so thank you. All right. Um, next up is the approval of minutes from our May 1st meeting. I'd like to make a motion to approve the May 1st meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right, moving right along. Superintendent's update. Mr. All Bond. right. We will start with one of the... The great days of every school year, our graduation ceremony. So Mrs. Page is going to say a few words about the, the wonderful ceremony we recently had. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
Ms. Barnwell, yes. Um, we were very fortunate last weekend not to have the weather we had this weekend. Um, I was feeling for all my colleagues about, you know, move inside, outside. So always such a beautiful um, space over at the town park. I think it's really unique. Not a lot of towns have um, that option. Um, so we graduated 106 students. Um, very sorry to see them go. They were a great group of young men and women. Um, and we actually look forward tonight. We'll see many of them back for the sports awards tonight. Um, but thank you, school committee, for supporting our students. And um, it was just a great night. A lot of work goes into it. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bernard, you have to talk, give you an overview of our professional development plan for next year. Um, it's always been our goal to get information to you sooner. And so we can really look at what we're doing and how we're planning for the next academic year. Good evening. Um, so next year we're planning on continuing working with our consultant for Wit and Wisdom at the Roselle and um, Spring Street through the Early Grades Literacy Grant. Um, teachers this year worked on Wit and Wisdom PD, Foundations, Hegarty. They, we have a core grant team there, and they attended uh, a number of grant meetings after school. We presented at a showcase last week um, in Marlboro, um, and it's been a great experience. So we just wrote the grant for, to continue it for next year. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed that we get, receive it. Uh, the middle school is going to implement Wit and Wisdom this year, so this will be their first year doing it. Um, so that's sixth, seventh, and eighth. We'll, ha we'll have a continuous from K to eight curriculum in ELA. Um, Howard School will also continue with their Wit and Wisdom implementation year two. We have a different consultant working with us at Howard School through another DESE grant. Um, and she's been pretty good. She's helping us write a landscape analysis. And from that landscape analysis, we'll continue to plan our PD. In February, we'll hold a whole district SEL day. Um, this is the second year we've done that. We're going to continue our partnership with Massachusetts Partnership for Youth. Um, they're a, P a PD provider, and they pr um, have a lot of really great presentations on mental health, social, emotional, and um, different, just different types of PD that the teachers can attend after school. And um, we're going to talk about culturally responsive teaching, what it is and why it matters. Um, and the ESL team will be working on uh, best toolkit, uh, best practices using a DESI toolkit. Um, they'll be unpacking that next year. And there are, a, there are a lot more other things that are in the works, but this is just a preview of what we have so far. Any questions? No, this is amazing. I know from sitting in on the planning for success, this was one of the big themes right. that, that kept coming up no matter which group I kind of filtered off mm -hmm. to. So. so hopefully that K to eight implementation of Wit and Wisdom covers a lot of, you know, the PD piece and the continuous grade level um, within ELA. And I'm looking forward to next year. Busy. I want to thank Ms. Giannis for all the work she's done with writing the grants, uh, getting our grant money. It's, it's a lot of takes money and funding. And, you know, if we don't have it in our budget, we've got to find ways for that. Thank our administrators for their mm -hmm. hard work and overseeing. Um, the changes that we make, and I, I gotta thank our teachers. We've said it before, but you know, making changes like this are pretty substantial, and they they work really hard. They've had some growing pains in terms of it's a heavy lift, and they've worked through it. They're, they're doing what's best for our kids, and they're and we've seen a lot of growth in them over the past year. And we think you know we're confident that will continue. Uh, but it's it's great to talk to them, to sit in with them. To listen to them, I think everyone's done a good job of listening. What are the concerns? What can we do? How can we help? Uh, we'll keep providing that assistance to give them everything they need to be successful. And we're also very understanding that this is a process. And you know, going with our, um, the people who have been helping our consultants has been very important and helpful. I think. So it's really, truly, has been a team effort to keep going. And this is we want to keep building it so we get stronger and stronger and our kids continue to show academic success. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next up we have Mrs. Page, pinch hitting, sports related. 
confirm for Ms. Thank Hamill. you. Yeah, Ms. Hamill wanted to be here, but she's busy setting up for um, the event this evening. Uh, so I have a write-up from her uh, wrapping up the spring season that I would like to read to you. Uh, the spring season was packed full of stellar moments for our student-athletes. The coaches put together a mini highlight reel to share some of those moments with all of you. In softball, it was an up and down year for softball, but there isn't a better group of young ladies. The team lost a few games in a row in the middle of the season, but they wouldn't give up. They kept working hard and were determined to do better. It has been a while since we have had this many older and younger players together on the varsity team. I hope the seniors realize any successful seasons in the future are because of their hard work with the younger players this year. In baseball, the team finished with a record of 9-11 and 11 and was the 33rd in the power rankings, just missing out on the ultimate goal of making the tournament. The leadership shown by our captains was outstanding. Every player on our roster gave 100% each and every game, and we never quit no matter the score, no matter the inning. Um, our season came down to the final three games needed to win all three to qualify for the postseason play. We beat Bishop Conley, then played arguably our best game of the season and beat St. Paul, uh, John Paul, but unfortunately lost to Bourne, the top team in Division 5 to end our season. I was very, Coach was very pleased with the strides we took this year and is excited for next year and the challenges that we face in our new league. Girls Spring Track and Field. The girls track team had a competitive season as a team during the regular season. In the postseason, several individuals had standout performances. Allie Bassett and Ella Dunbury were league all-stars. The 4x100 relay team, Kylie, Ava, Lasadia, and Allie qualified for the D6 championship. Alyssa Caldera, Ella Dunbury, and Allie Bassett also qualified the MIAA Division VI championship. Ella was the MIAA Division VI, VI champion in the two mile. Allie and Ella both ran uh, record breaking times at D, uh, at D6 and then qualified for the meet of champions where they held their own against competitors from all divisions across uh, Massachusetts. Finally, Lasavia Gurley was our solo senior who led the team by example and proved to be a versatile competitor sampling several events from throws to sprints to the hurdles. Boys spring, and track, boys spring Track and Field. The boys team had a very successful season, finishing 6-1 and one in the league and suffering only one narrow loss. We were led by an incredibly strong senior group, a lot of whom have been on the track team for many seasons and now had a chance to show their dominance. Tommy Perna and Sean Carter achieved league all-star status by finishing first in their events at the league championships. Will DeLuca set school records in the 100 and 200 meters. Tommy Perna broke a 45-year-old school record in the triple jump. And the 4x100 relay team of Tommy, J uh, Jake Souza, Sam Salter, and Will DeLuca broke their own school record. Will also qualified for the All-State Championship in the 100 meters. The senior group will be greatly missed, but the team has a strong up-and-coming core that will lead us next year. Boys Tennis. The boys tennis team had a great season as they were competitive in all their matches. They qualified for the state tournament uh, via Manchester Essex, um, but ended up losing their match. Girls Tennis had a great season. Everyone on the team improved a great deal, and we were very proud of them. We were led by seven incredible seniors, four of them being our wonderful captains. All of the ladies stayed together and worked hard to compete every day. I am very proud of what they have accomplished and excited to see what is next for this group. Great job for all spring sport athletes. We wish our seniors the best of luck in their future endeavors on and off the fields. And um, in West Bridgewater, we do have... Um, a tremendous amount of student athletes, which is great, um, and they always carry themselves and uh, represent our school um, in great fashion. So we're really proud of them. Thank, Thank you. you. And finally, I want to just give the committee and the community an update uh, where we are with the MSBA. Um, our eligibility period opened on March 1st and closes on November 27th. Um, when we became eligible, they, they sent us a list of deliverables of things we had to accomplish prior to November 27th. So we start checking things off the list, starting with our initial compliance certification. Our school building committee form was submitted uh, in mid-May. They are 
it's going through the legal process. They look at, they they uh, reflect on it. They and they haven't gotten back to us yet, but we are going to schedule a first meeting. They said that was fine to do. Uh, the educational profile questionnaire is a multi-page document that looks at our current situations within the schools and what we're anticipating as potential consolidations in the future. So it's really looking at what we have and what we potentially may want to have in the future. The online enrollment projection looks at our current enrollment. It looks at everything from um, over the past few years, births in town, housing developments, uh, anything that's planned. So we work with the town planner, the building inspector, building permits that have been issued and so forth. So it's a very comprehensive document. They take all that information, uh, including information that came from the town planner, thanks to even after we submitted. She was great about getting me information about development that may happen. It hasn't, the permit was pulled years ago, but activity has started again. That information has also been submitted to them. Um, and then they give us a baseline enrollment moving forward. Um, the initial numbers are up quite a bit. Um, we'll know what those official numbers are by the end of the summer. That's when they get back to us. Uh, so by August 28th, that uh, enrollment certification will be executed. They'll give us the numbers. We'll be able to go back to them and say, you know, we're not sure, or here's some more information. Uh, and I believe that's what's going to set the design enrollment for any new potential building. They'll, they will have numbers for each grade level moving forward up to like 2029, 2030, and so forth. Uh, we started working on the maintenance and capital uh, planning information. That's, again, an online form we fill out. I've shared information with our business director and our head of maintenance, so there's information we have to put in looking at past budgets, looking at things that we've done, um, to, again, to give the MSBA kind of a complete uh, set of information moving forward. By um, in the fall, the end of November, we'll have to have the local vote for authorization and we'll have to have um, the feasibility stu um, student agreement will be have to be signed. So uh, stuff that we will be working on. And like I said, we're going to have our kickoff meeting uh, next Monday night at 5 o'clock just to get everyone together that's on the, the unofficial list, I guess, right now uh, to talk about you know, what's been done so far, what are our plans going forward, and when we'll be scheduling meetings. So. I'm looking forward to it. It's a very good, comprehensive group that I think all is focused on creating the best project for the town of Westbury Water. And the kickoff meeting is going to be here? Correct. Right in here, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well. All right. Under business, we have an international travel summer 2024 presentation. Hi. Oh, you, okay. You have it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Edgar. Uh, I am the computer science teacher here. Um, we just came back after April vacation with a group of students. We went to five countries in Europe with 44 students and seven staff members. Um, and it was uh, exhausting, but it was an amazing, <laughs> amazing experience. Um, and so, uh, We'd love to do it again. Um, uh, my goal was to do a different continent, maybe. Uh, and so, uh, long story short, the Galapagos is in Ecuador. Uh, it's an island group off west, off, west, off the west coast of Ecuador. Um, and I'm sure you all know this, but um, it's known for its diversity of species different species and this is where Charles Darwin uh, did his research and came up with his theories. Um, it's There's an incredible variety. You know, the kids will see giant sea turtles, penguins, giant iguana, nasty scary things, um, and uh, you know, go um, not scuba diving but snorkeling, um, there's a boat ride, we'll go to a couple of the different islands, um, so I'm excited about that. And I, and I got talking too much, sorry. So why do we travel? There's a couple pics of the kids in Europe coming up, or, or is there, did I throw them in? Did you get my version? No, I'm sorry. So okay, I talked about Europe. I threw them in a little later. But um, it's, it's about the kids. Uh, I was nervous. Um, we saw kids 
who were completely shy, come out of their shells, um, kids that I was nervous about, um, turn out to be leaders, group leaders, and, and really um, blossom. There were kids who were nervous about sleeping away from home, who did a phenomenal job. Um, and it's just those little, those little things, kids trying new foods, you know, um, and things like that. So it, it, it's just, it, it, it's just awesome to watch the growth and the kids. So that's why we're going again. Um, we're going to stick with EF, um, educational tours this time, just for me, um, they did a great job of course, but for me to kind of do it, I'd like to stick with them at least one more year and then maybe we can do a little research and see what else is out there. But they did, a, I felt like they did a very nice job. Um, the support prior to the trip and then, um, they have a full-time person with you at all times on the trip. Uh, and that was incredibly helpful. That person certainly earned their money and did a, did a phenomenal job. So uh, I think they did a great job. Um, COVID wasn't an issue um, this time, but I definitely feel confident that whatever um, comes at us, there's a team there that can support us and from anything to find hospitals or doctor or you know band-aids or whatever I'm they'll take care of it they did do a phenomenal job and different people um, the tour director etc so I won't go into super detail they do have certain type of uh, insurance that's included. So their peace of mind program allows for uh, changes in travel dates, small changes in travel dates based on anything that should come up. Also, they, they do, you know, try to accommodate um, our requests in terms of, well, we'd like to leave on Saturday or, or whatever. So the tickets don't get purchased until about three months out, but they're really good about being flexible and working with us on picking those final exact dates. Um, there's a certain level of travel protection that is included, um, baggage loss, trip cancellation, interruption, etc. cetera. Uh, and then st students can purchase uh, an expanded travel protection plan, which basically always ensures that you won't need it. <laughs> uh, and so Ecuador, 11 days. We'll go into mainland Ecuador, um, do some touring. Um, I think the kids are going to really enjoy taking a selfie on the actual equator. And um, so four nights there. And then we're doing a couple of nights in each of the different islands. Um, uh, it's just there's just so much to see, and um, I won't go into the detail of every little thing. I would be here till tomorrow. But um, I, things that I'm excited about, I mean, giant turtles, pink flamingos, those scary iguanas, um, snorkeling. So uh, really exciting. And what's included: round trip airfare, hotel, um, the full time tour director. Um, tours, activities, breakfast and dinner. And in this case, in Europe, lunch wasn't included, but in this case, I think, because it's South America, lunch is included. So that's great. But nobody was hungry, on it, to say the least. And the, there's the price broken down. Um, and uh, it's, not, it's not an insignificant uh, investment. Honestly, I would like to work with uh, other teachers and with Mrs. Page to come up with, I have some ideas for coming up with some scholarships that we can maybe defray the cost for a few of the students. Um, but the, the EF does have a couple of things that they do to help you out. Maybe is it the next slide? No, that's okay. So they do have a couple of things to help kids out. Kids get their own little web page um, where it's kind of like a GoFundMe type of situation where kids can uh, try to, you know, have help people help them chip in. Um, and I do hope to do some more fundraising this year. And definitely, I have some ideas for a scholarship too. So, so that I can't think of anything else. What were the proposed dates? Oh, 
Good question. Uh, I, after school gets okay. out, I, 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 I don't know that I would do one or the other every year, but um, April was a lot, and so I think I'd love to try. And I had done this before a couple years back. The first week after school gets out, um, I think everybody's a little bit more relaxed, and then you get home and you can relax afterwards as opposed to going back to school. Um, so Mrs. Page worked with us, and we, it was a great schedule that we had the last time, so we did get a couple days at home Saturday and Sunday to um, relax. But I think, I think this will be nice. I think it'll be worth um, doing that, I think. So I'm going to admit that I have stalked the Instagram photos. Um, the trip looked amazing that you guys took. Um, and I know last year when we were sitting here, I was concerned about the COVID protocols that were still in, you know, over in Europe. And, um, you know, it was happy when, you know, I think we all were, when, when we could take a breath on that. But the trip just, I mean, and you were posting today again, and the trip just looked amazing. So I think it's a great opportunity for the kids that can go. Thank you. Thank you. What's yeah. the weather um, at that time? Well, uh, so, yes, but not as warm as I thought. It's like lovely, like um, 70, 80, I think, because it's in the island. The, I think Ecuador is warmer, but I think the islands themselves are a little bit cooler. So I don't think it will be too hot. I, I'm hoping that as like as it is here, sometimes, you know, when it's 80, it is still beach weather but so I think it'll be perfect honestly not too hot not too cold I think it'll be fine I like it a little warmer than that but <laughs> um, it's nice to see more of a science center trip um, you know just to provide options for the students I did have one question so you mentioned um, sticking with EF for another year and then looking at other options um, can I ask what the downside of EF is that we would look at other options well I mentioned the other options only because um, I didn't want folks to think that I, I was just kind of being lazy and not and not you know okay. doing more legwork. Um, and I think that every vendor that you work with is going to have some downsides. Of course. You know, um, I feel like. Were the hotels five star? No, no, they were not. Um, was the food spectacular? No, but I mean, it's hard. They're feeding 45 high school students, right? Mm -hmm. Who, um, you know, when my kids were, the, honestly, when I myself was that age, I was sort of like chicken nuggets and pizza kind of a, a, a person. I, chicken parm, if I was being really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, right, so, uh, so those kinds of things. I mean, you know, the. But in terms of the important things, the um, customer service, the hand holding, the tour director who was on site worked 24 seven, anything. Um, if I said, oh, do you think we could do this instead of that? Because maybe we're all tired of this or that. And he was like on it. So um, yeah, so time, you know, just yeah, really- so Just to kind of see what else is out there and compare and contrast. Exactly. That makes sense, it's smart. Thank you. Thank you for helping to organize this. Thank you for the chaperones. Again, we want our kids to be global learners. And I think this sets them up for knowing that there's life outside of West Bridgewater, this area, and to travel is really important because then hopefully it will spur them you know, later in life too. And, they, and sometimes taking a risk. I think just leaving home, uh, like you said, sometimes they haven't done anything like this or even gone you know, away to sleep. So it, it's, they, uh, they have to get out of their comfort zone, and so do parents sometimes. But I think when we have a very structured environment, as much as we can, I think it's good for our kids and it's good for our families. I think it's really great that we can offer this opportunity to students. When I was in college, I took advantage of something like that too, and I thought that I would be back to all the places that I visited, and I'm still waiting to go back, <laughs> so I'll take the chance when you have it. I'd like to make a motion to approve the international travel trip for the summer of 2024 as presented. Is there a second? Second. 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 And any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all <laughs> so much. Appreciate it. All right. Inclusion matters update. Ms. Dragonetti. The mission of Inclusion Matters as West Bridgewater Special Education Parent Advisory Council is to build inclusive schools and communities. 
We do this by supporting families of students with IEPs and 504s and including regular education parents by offering advice, advocacy within the school system, and opportunities for education and community building through regular workshops and events for parents, guardians, and families. We had another successful school year. In September, we kicked off the year by hosting tables at all four curriculum nights, spreading the word about our mission and meeting many new families. In October, we welcomed Dr. Ed Carter for our first workshop of the year, Understanding the IEP, a webinar for parents and guardians, followed by free one-on-one -on -one sessions with special education consultants later in the month. We rounded out 2022 by celebrating International Day of Persons with Disabilities with our annual Inclusion Matters Rock Your Socks fundraiser on December 2nd. We continued our parent workshops into the new year with Disorganized, Forgetful, Inflexible, Frustrated, Strategies to Grow Our Kids Executive Functioning, presented by clinical neuropsychologist and executive function expert, Dr. Anjali Palab, followed by Sexuality 101, How to Talk with Kids and Teens with Disabilities, with Tiffany Goffer-Fitz from As I Am Learning. In April, we were proud to celebrate neurodivergence and learn more about the autistic community with Autism Acceptance and Appreci Appreciation Spirit Week at each school. In May, we held our final webinar of the year, Supporting Your Child with Dyslexia, with Dr. Joanna Christodoulou, Associate Professor, Professor at MGH Institute of Health Professions. And of course, we called on the Inclusion Matters community to nominate West Bridgewater's Inclusive Educators with our annual Grant of Gratitude. Congratulations, Mrs. AJ. Now in June, we're calling on you. As we wind down this year and start planning for the next, Inclusion Matters is looking to you to get involved and help plan future events. If you'd like to help make West Bridgewater Special Education Parent Advisory Council the best it can be, contact us for ways to get involved. In the words of Nellie Barrero, diversity is a fact, but inclusion is a choice, and we make every day. As leaders, we have to put out the message that we embrace and not just tolerate diversity. For more information about Inclusion Matters, you can find us on Facebook at Inclusion Matters MA or by visiting our website at www.inclusionmattersma.com. All right, thank you, Mrs. Dragonetti. Next up is the Budget uh, Subcommittee Report. Um, yeah, so we just want to give a little update. Um, Dave and I met with Mark on May 20th to just kind of discuss the budget process for the next year. Um, we ad identified some initial objectives of the subcommittee um, and they kind of fell into four primary categories. The first was just to clarify the budget process and the authority um, of the school committee and um, provide some education on how the budget is developed. Um, so I know Dave has been working with Tracy Novick. Yep. Um, so uh, we've arranged some training for school committee Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee and any other interested parties in town uh, on how school budgets are to be developed. So what state laws say about how we develop these budgets, uh, what the process <coughs> should be. And it's just an informational session for anyone interested. Hopefully we can educate our community on how we develop the school budgets. Uh, so that will be on July 10th, it's a Monday night. So we haven't nailed down a time yet uh, trying to figure out what time works, but it seems like probably a six or seven o'clock in the evening is likely, because that's what works for most of the meetings that we hold. Um, so the second objective that we identified was to improve two-way communication and collaboration with the Board of Selectmen um, and FinCom. You know, Mr. Bodwell referenced um, some building projects. So just making sure the communication goes both ways, that we know about building projects that are happening and we know if, um, you know, our school population is growing so that we can account for that in the budget. Um, and then sending communication back um, in the other direction so that the town can can plan for our budget because um, you know our budget is the largest piece of the town budget and so it's important to have that two-way communication. Um, we've had we had a lot of great um, parent taxpayer involvement this year we'd like to continue to maintain that um, and then just to establish a time my timeline for subcommittee meetings and we we decided to do um, meetings quarterly so um, starting in mid-October we would have the initial report for fiscal year 24 um, and that would be our opportunity to kind of discuss as um, a subcommittee what our goals and objectives are in building the budget um, so that Mark and Kathy can do their hard work um, 
into late in January, we'd meet again and have kind of a first look. Um, I know when we talked last year about the budget, it started at 11% before they pared it down to 7.78%. So just being um, much more communicative about where we start and where we end, um, because we did, uh, there was a lot of hubbub about our budget being a really big number, but it could have been much bigger um, due to the hard work of kind of figuring out where we could take pieces out so that the burden on the taxpayers um, you know, was, was reasonable. And then March through April, we have our whole committee meetings. And then in July, just a recap and review problem solve for the fiscal year 26 budget process. What worked, what didn't, what can we do um, looking into the next year? Great. And that's it. Thank you very much. It looks like a great plan. Thanks. Great job. Yeah. All right, next up, superintendent's evaluation. Um, First of all, thank you to Mr. Bodwell for submitting his documents and evidence to us, and thank you to the other committee members for completing their individual evaluations as well, um, including Mr. David Yeo, a former school committee member who um, left the committee in April, um, but he also com completed um, an evaluation. What I'm going to do is present the ratings on the summative evaluation, which includes the ratings from five evaluators, me, Mrs. Dragonetti, Mrs. Milton, Mr. Schmier, and Mr. Yeo. Being a new school committee member, Mrs. Mayakovsky understandably opted to only um, submit comments for the evaluation. I'll also read a couple of um, comments from both Mr. Yo and myself, and then I'll turn it over to the other committee members so you can share any comments you want as well. So um, under step one, to assess Mr. Um, Bodwell's overall progress toward his goals, Mr. Bodwell's professional practice goals were marked as met by four of the evaluators and were rated as made significant progress by Mr. Schmier. His student learning goals were rated as met by three of the evaluators with Mrs. Dragonetti and Mr. Schmier marking these as um, significant progress. And his district improvement goals were rated as met by four of the evaluators with Mr. Schmier marking this as um, significant progress made. Under step two, which is to assess overall performance on standards, all five evaluators marked Mr. Bodwell as proficient in instruction leadership, management and operations, and prof professional culture. And four of us rated him proficient in family and community engagement with Mr. Schmier rating him as exemplary in this category. And then for step three, the rating for overall summative performance based on assessing his progress towards both his student learning goals and performance standards. Mr. Bodwell received five proficients. And then the evaluation goes on further to break down the superintendent's um, performance goals even more. Under goal one, professional practice addressing lack of resources, this goal was rated as being met by Mrs. Dragonetti and Mr. Schmier, while the other three evaluators um, marked this as significant progress made. For goal two, student learning, instructional leadership, and student achievement, Mr. Bodwell was marked as making significant progress toward this goal by four of the, of the evaluators, with Mrs. Milton marking this goal as being met. For goal three, professional practice, implementation of new programs, this goal was rated as being met by Mrs. Milton and Mr. Schmier, with the other three evaluators marking this as significant progress made. Goal four, student learning, social and emotional learning and culture of belonging. Mr. Bodwell was marked as making significant progress toward this goal by all five evaluators. And for his fifth goal of district improvement, school building project, this goal was rated as being met by Mr. Yo and Mr. Schmier with the other three evaluators marking this one as significant progress made. And for his sixth goal, district improvement, planning for success district plan, this goal was marked as having been met by all five evaluators. Under the breakdown of performance rating for standard one instructional leadership, Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by all five evaluators in four of the areas in this standard. Curriculum, instruction, assessment, and data-informed decision-making. In the area of evaluations, he was <clears throat> rated as proficient by four of the evaluators, with Mr. Schmier rating him as needs improvement in this area. And his overall rating for standard one instructional leadership was proficient by all five evaluators. <clears throat> Excuse me. Under the breakdown of performance rating for standard two management and operations, 
Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by all five evaluators in three of the five areas under the standard. Environment, Scheduling and Management Information Systems, and Law, Ethics, and Policies. Under Human Resources Management and Development, Mr. Bodwell received a rating of proficient from three of, it, of the evaluators, with Mrs. Dragonetti and Mr. Schmier marking this as an area needing improvement. And under fiscal systems, Mr. Bodwell received a rating of proficient by three of the evaluators with Mrs. Milton and Mr. Schmier rating him as exemplary in this area. His overall rating for standard two management and operations was proficient by all five evaluators. Under the breakdown of performance rating for standard three family, family and community engagement, Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by four of the evaluators in two of the four areas under the standard, sharing responsibility and communication. Mrs. Milton rated Mr. Bodwell as exemplary in the area of sharing responsibility and Mr. Schmier rated Mr. Bodwell as exemplary in the area of communication. Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by all five evaluators in the area under this, under this standard of family concerns and he was marked as proficient in the area of engagement by Mrs. Dragonetti and Mr. Yeo, with the other three evaluators marking him as exemplary in this area. His overall rating for standard three, family and communication, community engagement, was proficient by four of his evaluators, with Mr. Schmier rating him overall for this standard as exemplary. And then finally, under the fourth standard of professional culture, Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by all five evaluators in four of the six areas under the standard, communication, continuous learning, shared vision, and managing conflict. He was marked as proficient in the area of committed to high standards by four of the evaluators with Mrs. Milton rating him as exemplary in this area. And in the area of cultural cultural proficiency under the standard, Mr. Bodwell was rated as proficient by myself, Mr. Schmier, and Mr. Yo, with Ms. Mrs. Dragonetti rating him as needs improvement and Mrs. Milton rating him as exemplary. Mr. Bodwell's overall rating for standard four, professional culture, was proficient by all five evaluators. Um, so I would personally like to thank you, Mr. Bodwell, for the work that you do as superintendent, uh, being responsible for over 200 staff and 1,400 students, for overseeing four buildings, for being responsible for a budget over $19 million, and for being responsible for making West Bridgewater the best district possible. Um, and, to, and my portion, I'd like to read Mr. Yo's overall comment on your evaluation as well as my own. Mr. Yo said, as I believe, as always, I believe Mr. Bodwell continues to excel in his position as superintendent for the West Bridgewater School District. I know there has been talks before about how the grading of these evaluations read. I would like to reiterate that by scoring Mr. Bodwell proficient in these areas, I have a firm belief that he will continue to improve, grow, and succeed into the position of superintendent. With that being said, I believe Mr. Bodwell sets a standard for our school district employees and promotes a culture for the West Bridgewater School District that is deeply rooted in our mission statement. And then my overall comment, um, I stated, over the past year, Mr. Bodwell continues his dedication to developing a shared vision that prepares the students of WB for life after high school. He's professional, approachable, and transparent and fosters teamwork, teamwork and excellence. He is committed to the role of superintendent and uses the resources available to assist him in this role. Mr. Bodwell's understanding of the challenges face facing our students and his high standards of ethics, honesty, and integrity are indicators that WB will continue on its path of fostering lifelong learners and responsible citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I would <clears throat> like to say thank you as well. Um, I think you and the district had a really good year. Um, I'm impressed with the number of goals. Um, I did want to actually, Donna, you and I chatted briefly beforehand about one of my ratings um, being in the wrong column, and I noted there were there were actually a couple of other ones. Oh, okay. Um, so we can kind of, I don't know, figure that out. Um, but I actually had you meeting five out of the six of your goals rather than, I know I have significant progress on here for a couple of them. Um, I think with the exception of the social emotional learning, which we all know, you know, it's struggling to get off the ground, but um, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. And so I think that in general, um, we've done a really nice job this year. Um, I'm impressed with the growth we made. I think West Bridgewater um, as a whole, we have more growth to make. 
um, but on the whole, I rated you as proficient. Um, thank so you. thank you. Thank you. I would say my little time on the school committee, um, you have been very data oriented, and which is very transparent, which I really appreciate. I'm still learning my role in the school committee. Um, so you make sure everyone's on the same page, which is great. Um, it helps build a sense of um, trust and collaboration with everyone, so um, which is better outcomes for everyone in the district and our students. So it's, uh, it's been kind of a long year as the first full year in school committee, and there was a lot to learn there. Uh, but you've been very helpful along the way, and I really want to thank you for that. Uh, I feel like we always do have to have somewhere to try and take our goals to, right? So we've, there's always something we can improve on. Uh, so any needs improvement that I give you is not a negative comment about you, but just here are the things that I think we can focus on when we move forward. Okay. So really, it's the, the way that we tell you what we want to focus on. Nothing negative to say about your performance. I think it's been fantastic. Yeah, I just want to piggyback on that. You know, last year we had a conversation of needs improvement is when you're in your first three years under the educator eval, um, reaching towards or striving towards proficiency within your first three years. Well, this is your first three years, which is um, why I do feel strongly that you are proficient. But to Dave's point, everybody has needs improvement somewhere. And so that's how we grow um, as a district. So I also want to say thank you. I um, have really enjoyed, like Dave, my first full year on the committee. Um, when I had approached your um, evaluation, I looked at your overall understanding, command of the business, your, your ability to work autonomously, um, and then also those initiatives that you have. You've taken on a lot of strategic growth initiatives, and there's a lot as a new superintendent that you've been doing, and I thought you've done it really well. Um, my, I've said it to you a couple times. Um, I, I'm always saying you're, you're so looking so far out to the future, you know, I want to make sure that you have that right support structure underneath you, which is you have an amazing staff and um, team that, that work with you. So, um, you know, that, that makes me feel better. But I know you have a lot of big things that you're looking to accomplish while still looking, looking down. Um, and and that, that always makes me feel uncomfortable. But um, I think you've done a really great job. Um, and Donna, thank you. I thought you did a really great job this year. Um, I know last year we had some back and forth at the meeting, and I, I think you really did nailed it, putting all, all this together. So Absolutely. thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate all the feedback. Um, I really, it's, it's, I take it's very meaningful feedback uh, for growth. But I mean, I couldn't do the job without the, the great administrative team I have. I'm blessed to work with great administrators, great educators, great kids and in a great community. And I think I've always said that, that everyone working together makes us what we are. And I truly believe that. It's, I truly feel blessed to be here with all the people that are involved. Um, it's, uh, you know, goals. I don't know if I'll keep six next year, but uh, I think, and, but not that things are, even if when they're met, they, we, they're still in the mix. We're still, we're still working on things. Uh, so it's, it's a way for me to focus my attention and others and to make sure we're you know, goal oriented and we have a vision for the future um, working so we don't just start something and not finish it. Um, and I, like I said, growth every year. I, I hope that every year I see growth. I, I hope to improve. Um, I hope to you know, learn and get better every year. So I, I, you know, any needs improvement or any comments I take is really meaningful. Um, because the feed, you know, we don't get better without feedback. Uh, just, just you know, check boxes being checked, no matter where they are, doesn't mean as much as true, true feedback. And that goes for everyone. So, thank you. Um, I love what I do. I love, I love being here. And I hope just to continue. Working what is this? Twenty seventh. I think this next year will be my twenty seventh year in West Virginia. Twenty seven more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up is policies to open the review. All right, okay. I'd like to make a motion um, to open the following policies for review in August. AC, non-discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation. ACA, non-discrimination on the basis of sex. ACE, non-discrimination on the basis of disability. BEC, executive sessions. JICFB, bullying prevention. JIH, searches and interrogations, 
JJA, Student Organizations, JICFB Form, Bullying Incident Reporting Form, JICFB Form, Parent Communication Form. Can I get a second? Second. Um, so discussion on this. Um, so I, first of all, JJE is on here. I took that off the list because we already have that open. Um, when we discuss our policies in a moment, we are actually going to hold this to discuss it in August. Um, but that's why I took that off the list. So a handful of these are annual reviews. So the non-discrimination policies, um, we're going to kind of make it a habit to open them at the end of the year so we can review them for a fresh start of the school year in August. Um, we added bullying prevention to that list as well um, as that's one that probably should be reviewed pretty regularly so um, we'll look towards reviewing those in August and then the others are just cross references cross from the work that yeah. we've been doing so far any other discussion mm -hmm. all right all in favor aye, aye. aye. Yes. all right um, next so I uh, Move to rescind policy CLB administrative reports. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? Yep. So this one we opened in April, and I'm not sure what happened, but when we met last month, we forgot to review it. So <laughs> I was going through the list the next day, talking to Robin, and we were like, oh, no. Um, so this one actually um, is no longer on the MASC website. It's So that's why we're looking to rescind it. It's yeah. a policy that they did away with. Yeah, and when we, um, I believe this one was absorbed um, into other policies. That we reviewed, yep, prior. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, move to hold policy, JJE, student fundraising activities open for further review and discussion at the onset of the school year in September. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? Yep, so this is the one that we had opened um, and we had deferred it um, to once before and we're looking to defer it again. We want to um, just just be with everything that's been going on. There's been so many tight demands on everybody's schedules and changing of the guard over at the PTO. We want to be able to have a, a more inclusive conversation regarding our approach and um, what the MASC is um, recommending for the their policy language and how that would impact us in the district. So we're, we'll tackle that over the summer. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, move to adopt the following policies as written. BDE, subcommittees of the school committee. BDF, advisory committees to the school committee. BDG, school attorney. BEDG, minutes. BGD, School Committee Review of Procedures, JIB, Student Involvement in Decision Making, JJF, Student Activity Accounts, JRA, Student Records, and JRD, Student Photographs. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion. All right, so um, a lot of them had no edits, so I'm just gonna go through the list kind of quick. So BDE, subcommittees of, subcommittees of the School Committee, we made no edits. BDF, Advisory Committees to the School Committee, there was some verbiage on the bottom that we removed, as you can see, um, as it was redundant and it was not in the revised MASC policy. BDG, school attorney, had been renamed from school attorney slash service of legal counsel. Um, in this policy, this revised policy, there were some um, pronoun inclusions that were added. Um, in addition, there was a section on the bottom of the original policy that had um, service of legal counsel is in relation to the school committee that had been removed as we felt it was irrelevant. Moving on, policy B, E, D, G for minutes. Um, there was just some minor um, wordsmithing changes and some consolidation of one um, items from the previous policy, one and two into the one paragraph. Policy B, G, D, school committee review of procedures. Um, the policy overall remained the same. However, the, we did update some sourcing. Um, there was one thing that we noticed in this one um, that I want to point out that the policy itself mentions a staff handbook that the committee will need to review and approve annually. Um, I wasn't sure if that was something that we have, Mr. Bodwell. So do you have but that's one of the things we're working on okay. to finalize that. I actually just put a note on that before you said that. Uh, that's something that we have to 
kind of pull back together. We've had them in the past. They haven't been always updated all the time. So that makes sense. Yeah, and that was actually an area of note on my evaluation. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't even remember which standard and indicator, but just, um, I think it was human resources mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. developing a staff handbook to find, and you know, it comes from a variety of sources, from policies, from the contract, from HR, um, just so that staff, and I know the website actually looks really good. There's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff on the website for staff, um, but putting it all in one place, uh, I think is important. Yes, in fact, the handbook might put HR handbook right next to it. Okay, policy JIB student involvement in decision making. Um, there was no changes to the policy in terms of verbiage itself, but um, there was one thing that I want to know under student advisory committee. There's a note in the MASC policy that stated, and I'm going to read it, as required by state law, the committee will meet at least once every other month while school is in session with its student advisory committee which is composed of five students elected by the high school student body. The chair of the student advisory committee shall be an ex officio non-voting member of the school committee without the right to attend executive sessions unless such right is expressly granted by the school committee. So what I wanted to do was just verify, do we have this in place? And if we do, who is acting in that capacity? Because I didn't know. We have we have a student council. Um, That's yep. where the reps come yeah, from, right? Right, but which meets regularly throughout the year. Um, before COVID, we actually hosted here. Um, I think that's the one that's name. Yeah. Or something. Um, so it's, it's something that the student council puts forth uh, to students. We do it the junior senior. Um, okay. They, they meet monthly. With areas, um, with um, the, um, so just of note, I know you, Carrie, had mentioned that this was in the MASC policy. It's actually in our current policy as well. Um, so there was no major changes on this one. So it is something that we just kind of highlighted as, oh, are we are we doing that? And to your point, yeah, it was yep. happening before COVID. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it might be something to revisit. So as we go through, we're like, huh. Yeah, and I yep. know, you know, every month we're looking for student reps, and this might be something that we tighten Absolutely. up a little bit so that it's, it's it, you know, maybe students get community service credit um, to serve on this committee and write the updates so that they're, they're you know, written by students about things that they care about. It's just something to kind of think about. All right, moving on. JJF, student activity accounts. Um, we removed some verbiage um, that was in there from, that we had in our old one that had DESI auto requirements. Um, JRA, student records, very small minor modifications that were made um, for added language. And then JRD, student photographs, identical language. We just had some um, formatting. I don't know if they had like dashes and there was now bullets or something, but. Um, that was it. That's it. Any further discussion? Nope. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That's it for policies. And now warrants. All right. The following warrants were issued and paid for the fiscal year 2023. Bill warrants on May 4th, 2023 for $104,231.21. May 11th, 2023 for $293,573.16. May 18th, 2023 for $232,678.43, and there was no warrant on May 25th, 2023. The following two payroll warrants, May 12th, 2023 for $545,331.36, and May 26, 2023 for $681,131.52. As always, all warrants are public record and once signed are available in the Selectman's office for review. Is there a typo on the May 18th number? I, think I thought I heard you read a oh, different number than yes. what's there. On the paper, it's 232,678. Okay. So there must be a typo on the, hopefully. So we'll go with what you read. We'll go right. with what I read, all right. yes. <laughs> All right. Public comment. Members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student confidentiality cannot be addressed during public comment. Taker? Hello. 
Good evening. I'm James Hanna, Assistant Principal here at West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School. I just want to take an opportunity at the end of the school year to thank Principal Page, and Superintendent Bodwell, and of course the committee for the opportunity uh, to serve the district this year. It's been an absolute pleasure and uh, a life-changing experience for me. So I just wanted to say thank you personally, as opposed to just sending out an email or catching you here or there or anywhere. I just wanted to make it official. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Great. I'm glad thank to have you. you. Thank you. Okay, see nothing else. We'll move on to the calendar events. Um, District-wide, there'll be a half day on June 7th. Um, June 13th is the last day of school, which is also a half day, and report cards will be electronically distributed. On June 14th, there'll be an athletic um, boosters meeting at 7 o'clock in the Middle Senior High School Learning Commons. At the Middle Senior High School, June 6th and 7th, Biology MCAS will take place. On June 6th, um, the Drama Club field trip to the Prom Musical in Boston. On June 8th, grade 8, 7th, we'll have a field trip to Urban Air. And also on June 8th will be the field day for grade 8. On June 9th, grade 8, um, we'll take a field trip to the Boston Harbor Cruise. And on June 9th is the grade 7 field day. Also on June 9th, there'll be a self-defense class at 6 o'clock here in the Learning Commons. And on June 13th is the Grade 8 celebration. The self-defense, we've moved that to September. Oh, okay. Yep. Of course, we're hoping, that off the list. We're Sorry. hoping to do that, but um, I think September is a little bit better time Timing. than June. All right, so scratch that one. Um, at the Howard School on June 6th, there'll be an ice cream social at the Senior Center. On June 8th is the Howard School Field Day, and on June 12th is this grade six celebration um, starting at 11.30. At Rose L. McDonald, June 12th is the grade three celebration at 9.30 um, in the Middle Senior High School Auditorium. Oh, they have it over here, that's great. Um, and at the Spring Street School, June 5th um, through the 12th is the class end of year celebrations for the preschool and the kindergarten. On June 8th, um, RLM will visit, uh, uh, there'll be a visit at RLM for the incoming grade one students at 9.30. And on June 9th, Toe Jam Puppet Band will be um, taking place as a presentation for the kindergarten. Our next regularly school committee meeting will be in August, on August 21st um, at 6 p.m. here in the Learning Commons. Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Have a great July. We'll see you in August. <laughs>